Hey everyone, welcome back to VoIP Tech. In this video, we're going to talk about power over Ethernet, or another way of saying that in layman's terms is, how does this phone get power? Because there's three different ways you're going to see that happens. One is the traditional way, which is just use a plain old power adapter with a little DC power plug. We're all familiar with those kind of things. Just about everything in our electronic world runs on these, and there's a little spot in the back where that connects. So that's one way. The other way is what's known as an injector. Now what an injector does is it has power connected to it. This little box right here is called an injector. These come in all different shapes and sizes. So this is just one example. But this little box has a power adapter that plugs into the wall. And then what happens is the network from the uh, switch or, or the router sometimes you might refer to it as, uh, the, that cord comes into here, and then on the other side is another cord that goes out of here, which goes into the phone. And then that is taking the network cord and putting power on it. So that's why they call it an injector, because it injects power onto the line. The injector may live next to the instrument, or it may live somewhere far away from the instrument, like back in a uh, wiring closet. So you may not actually see the injector. Now, the last way is just pure uh, power over Ethernet. So the reason I'm holding this is because this is an Ethernet cord. So I'm going to demonstrate each one of these three so you can kind of get the uh, the full picture. So let's start with the simplest. If you've got your um, power adapter, um, I'm actually not going to bother to plug that in because we all know what that does. But basically your power adapter goes here on the bottom in a little spot for the little DC plug and that powers up the phone. The thing I don't like about that is that it leaves a point of failure close to the end user, meaning that they can accidentally unplug it, maybe like while they're in the middle of a phone call, which would be bad. Um, or the other one is it just creates a troubleshooting hassle. Now, the most common way you're going to see, especially in corporate environments, is what's known as power over Ethernet. So let's get this Ethernet cord out. So the power over Ethernet, what happens is the switch which is way back in this closet somewhere. Now, I just happen to be in my lab, so it's right here. But the switch is what's known as a power over Ethernet switch, meaning that every one of these little switch ports also will send power to devices that request it. Now, if the device doesn't need power, it's not going to bother sending it. It has a mechanism in it that determines whether or not the device on the other end is a PoE, power over Ethernet, um, compatible device. So what happens is, is that the Ethernet cord back in a switch closet, it usually goes from the switch and then into a patch panel. And then, of course, the patch panel has a wire that goes to the ceiling and the walls that comes out to the wall jack. Then there's another end which goes into the wall jack. Well, this goes into the phone in the network spot. And that powers up the phone. So as you can see, there's no... There's no adapter. We're not using the, the power adapter anymore. There's nothing plugged into the little power port anymore. That's because the power the phone needs to run is coming from the power over Ethernet switch. So you'll hear that term a lot if you work in the VoIP industry, PoE, or power over Ethernet. Now, in situations where the switch does not provide power over Ethernet, that's when you can use an injector. And again, an injector could be living back in the closet where the wiring panel is, where the patch panel is, or it could actually be next to the end user or the or the, the final endpoint. I don't like keeping things like this near the endpoint. I want to keep these things away from the users. It just is more likely to, to cause less trouble in terms of them, you know, unplugging something. So let's plug that in. And now the injector is providing power over the cord. So you could say this this is another form of power over Ethernet. But usually when you say PoE, you're usually referring to a switch, whereas in this case, this is an adapter. But they both are a form of PoE. And then what happens is from the switch or from the wall comes the cord that carries the data, goes into the other end of the, core, of the injector. All right? And then that is it. Those are the three different ways you get power. You don't need both. In other words, if you have PoE, you don't need to also additionally plug in the power adapter. Um, in fact, actually, it's preferred that you don't. 
So a lot of times when you uh, are working in environments, uh, corporate environments, you're going to find that when you go and pick up an instrument like this, you turn it over, there is no power. There's All there is is just an Ethernet cord going in there, and that's because the switches are providing the power over Ethernet. One little troubleshooting tip you're going to find is that oftentimes you'll ask people to reboot the phone. Sometimes they unknowingly have both PoE and a power adapter. So what will happen is they'll unplug the power adapter thinking that they're doing a power recycle on the phone, but not realizing that there may also be PoE going into the network port, which means the phone actually never gets rebooted. So that's a common trip up that happens sometimes for technicians troubleshooting. So the easiest way to eliminate that is just to tell them to unplug everything from the back of the phone. So I hope that helped you understand power over Ethernet or how devices like this are, um, are powered. And uh, if you like what you saw, give me a like in the uh, section below or leave a comment. I'm always happy to hear comments and I write back to them as frequently as I can. Otherwise, thanks for watching.